Okay, for a first generation product, Intel's Arc GPUs have come in quite strong. According to JPR here, Intel is at the same market share on dedicated GPUs as AMD at this current moment, about 9%. I don't know about you, but that number surprised me because Intel doesn't seem to be really winning in anything. Like Intel's best value option, which is the Arc A750 right now, I am aware this has gone all the way down to $200 at one point, but currently it's at $240. It gets handedly beat by a 6600 XT, which goes for about the same price. Even Nvidia is very competitive to Intel's pricing at this current moment, offering a 3060 eight gigabytes of the same amount of VRAM as the 750 at $260, which is extremely close in performance. And that is a graphics card coming from Ingridia. On top of that, Intel's ARC graphics cards are a first generation product, which means their software, although it is getting better, is just less consistent and more buggy than Nvidia's and AMD's offerings. Again, we are asking how is Intel matching AMD's market share in the dedicated graphics card market? That also makes us question how good this segue is to this video sponsor. Oh my God, what did I just do? Imagine being this guy. Couldn't be me. But you're like, Vex, how do I fix this when Big Corpo Microsoft is asking $200 to farm your data? Today's sponsor, SCD Key, you can get Windows 10 edition and upgrade it for free to Windows 11 for a low, low price. And once you get to checkout, make sure to use code VEX for an extra 25% off, then just choose your preferred payment method and you'll be emailed your code. I also have confirmation from SCD keys themselves that all of their keys are ethically sourced from OEM manufacturers. So that's something that you can trust. All links will be in the description. Make sure to use code VEX. Let's get back into it. So comparing Intel to its competition, even when they have cut prices quite a bit, AMD is still destroying them in the market. 6600 XTs are faster than 750s, as I mentioned earlier, and go for about the same price. Uh, 6700 XTs are faster than 770s and are also cheaper. AMD is offering the best price to performance for gaming in the current GPU market, but that doesn't tell the whole story. What I have to mention is that your gaming price to performance is only one aspect of a graphics card for a computer because a computer can do basically anything. Like if you want to record videos on your graphics cards and you start to compare the footage that you get from one graphics card to the other, it's almost embarrassing the footage that AMD spits out. Look at AMD's H.264 encoder, which is a very standard encoder and is what you would live stream if you're live streaming to Twitch or something like that, compared to Intel's H.264 encoder on the right. There is a stark difference. Intel's looks way better because AMD has barely updated their encoders at all. And I know a lot of people are going to say AMD's H.265 encoder, HEVC, is way better. Let's look at that. AMD is still getting beat by Intel. In fact, AMD has the worst encoder performance out of any GPU brand. And as many of you guys will know, this doesn't really come as a surprise, but that's just one of the downsides to getting an AMD card, whereas Intel is offering way better encoding performance on that. And not to mention at these prices, say against a 750 versus a 6600 XT, a 6600 XT does not have AV1. AV1 is the future of encoding videos. Now, a lot of you guys are thinking the 7600 is at $270 and it offers AV1 at that price point from AMD's latest generation RDNA 3 cards. But from what I've seen, now I don't have my hands on this card to test the AV1 performance compared to Intel. AMD's AV1 performance is not as good as Intel or Nvidia's competition. Take that into account. Plus with the 7600, you're still getting the bad H.264 and H.265 encoders compared to Intel. That's just the downside of getting AMD. But it's definitely worth considering the greater scope of things and why Intel is possibly gaining market share on AMD here. And that's because they offer something AMD doesn't offer at their price point. And as Steve or Gordon said, I forget exactly who said it. Look, Steve, Intel doesn't need to be uh, doesn't need to be first. They only need to be second. He said they only have to take market share from AMD. They don't necessarily have to take it from Nvidia. Because computers can be way more 
than just gaming. You know, if you just want a game, you know, feel free to buy an AMD card. But also is another reason maybe why Intel is gaining market share. Maybe it's not more that they're gaining market share. Maybe it's that AMD is losing market share. That's because if people just want a game on their computer, and that's what AMD is best for, then you could just get a console. But I guess in the end of things, AMD isn't really hurting because they also make the chips for the consoles anyways. So in the end, they still make sales. It's just food for thought and maybe a longer discussion for a different day. But I also hear you saying, if you just want to record videos and stuff like that, why don't you just get NVIDIA from the start? As I mentioned, they're really about the same price as AMD's best offerings. The RTX 3060 eight gigabyte card is about $260 and you get NVIDIA's NVENC encoder. As all of you guys know, that is basically the, the industry standard for encoders. It, it is very high quality and efficient. But what I'm about to say is gonna surprise you. Intel's quick sync encoders are better than NVIDIA's encoders. Yes, the all famous NVENC encoder does not perform as well as Intel's. Like Intel is killing it right now. And that is a major selling point for a lot of people, especially with this H.264 encoder and performing even better than NVENC. And NVENC is quite amazing in my opinion. The same situation that AMD is going through with their best value parts being their last generation, which didn't have AV1 encoders, again, the most standard forward looking encoder out there, most efficient one that we have. Intel also has that at a cheaper price. You can get AV1 on Intel for $240 with the ARC A750 and the 3060, 3060 Ti do not offer that right now. If you want AV1 for the cheapest price and very high quality from Intel, then ARC is your best option. And I hear you also saying the RTX 4060 will be coming out at $300 even and we'll have NVENC AV1. And AV1 from NVENC or NVIDIA is supposed to be better than Intel's offering of AV1 as well. However, again, that is still $300 for AV1. You're also only getting eight gigabytes of VRAM with that 4060. They do not offer much VRAM at, at an affordable price. The 3060 Ti has eight gigabytes and the 3060, the one that I've been mentioning for $260 also has eight gigabytes. The freaking 3080 only has 10, but Intel is offering you 16 gigabytes of VRAM for $340. And this is such a ridiculous amount of VRAM to me. In my last video, I, I joked at the beginning that I had unlimited VRAM. The reason I said that is because I had 16 gigabytes on this ARC A770 at $340. It's not infinite, but it feels like so much that you're never gonna run out of it. Just remember, Nvidia is gonna give us a 4060 Ti, 16 gigabytes on a 128 bit bus for $500, while Intel is offering way faster VRAM at 340. Again, that's another thing that Intel has over AMD as well as AMD's last generation cards did not have AI accelerator cores or really very powerful ones, I'm not exactly sure, but basically they were useless. And Intel does offer AI acceleration. And this is just why Intel's cards, their biggest advantage is that they're the most well-rounded graphics cards in the market right now. They are decently priced for their performance, especially compared to Nvidia. They offer you decent VRAM for your price. Honestly, they're good at ray tracing and stuff like that in games, especially compared to what AMD's offering with their cards. And on top of that, they are probably the best graphics cards for content creators currently. However, there is an Achilles heel to Intel, and I know it's pretty much the elephant in the room, and that is Intel's Arc driver software. It just needs a lot of time to catch up. And one of the worst things, even though I I have been praising them for their encoder performance and their efficiency to record the best quality videos at the best file size possible. Intel has this awful problem and it's definitely bugginess on Intel's side of things. When the graphics card is under max load, your encoder gets overloaded and there's literally 
nothing you can do about it. It doesn't matter how fast you, you give the preset, how light you make the workload. You see in this case that the footage is stuttery and even though it's supposed to be 60 FPS, it does not look anything like that. So let's just see a little bit of troubleshooting I did and how impossible it was to try to get this to work. Anyways, I've been trying to get this art card to run because every time I record, right now I'm recording on my CPU. Okay, on uh, I'll show you the settings. We're on we're on X two six four right now. CBR of twenty five thousand. No, and it just like chugs. It just it just chugs. Yeah, in this case here, I was recording on my CPU, not even using the art graphics card specifically to record, and it still was buggy as crap. Now I do have one theory of how this could be happening and that is maybe because I'm on a PCIe Gen 3 system but I cannot confirm or deny that at this current moment. To mention this doesn't happen on any of the other graphics cards AMD or Nvidia so it's just an arc problem at the end of the day. On top of it being buggy while it's recording you run into some other issues as well. Obviously it's a new product, it's a new generation. So older games, you can have a little bit of problems and like here's Skyrim for example, and Skyrim definitely has issues. You see it's frame time graph in the top left is a little jittery. Intel can have more issues and more variation than Nvidia and AMD. Intel here doesn't perform that well compared to AMD in Fortnite. But if you go over to Cyberpunk at the same settings, Intel starts to beat the AMD card. It went from a huge performance gap in Fortnite to beating it in Cyberpunk. Definitely inconsistent if I've ever seen it. Despite that though, it is really cool seeing them at a market share of 9%. If this is accurate in quarter four 2022, which it might be higher now, they actually might have more market share than AMD at this current moment in the GPU market. If this is true, it's really cool to see a third competitor in this market actually making it because i know when intel is starting to come around and saying like oh we're going to start making graphics cards a lot of people were questioning is there room for a third competitor in the gpu market anyways because you know nvidia was seen as basically the high-end brand if you have a little bit more money and you want the best you get nvidia and then amd was basically hey this is like the budget brand this is the best performance per your dollar but it seems like intel has found a way to slot into this market. They're offering the most well-rounded cards. So as long as people keep adopting Intel's graphics cards, we will get to see what they cook. Because they need more powerful graphics cards and we'll see what happens with Battle Mage, which should be releasing this year sometime and seeing how their, their driver software evolves over time. Their driver software has improved very quickly, especially since well, like September, October, when these cards launched. I guess we'll just have to see how it goes and you know, wish to keep having competition in this space because that's good to see. It makes all of us happy. It just gives us more options. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, all right? Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. And if you want to join the Discord, you know, that link is in the description. We actually had a live stream, pulled in a few of your guys' PC builds and, you know, we judged them on stream. So if you'd want to be a part of events like that or just hang out with the community and, you know, meet some people, talk about PC components, then, you know, Discord is a fun place to be. So hope to see you there. Hope to see you in the comments and you guys all have a good day. I'll see you. Bye.